I had a kind of epiphany about my relationship with the Greeks while having dinner on a rooftop restaurant in Athens just a few years ago. I was sitting with my wife and a Greek friend of ours, and right at a certain hour, the Parthenon lights up uh, and creates quite the Technicolor uh, MGM uh, impression. And uh, I remember my wife talking about, uh, about uh, my particular interests and how uh, well, you know, Mark's greatest love is music, and I remember looking over at the Parthenon uh, and saying, well, you know, that's music also. And I really realized that what music, and by music I mean classical music, music of Bach, Beethoven, Monteverdi, Schubert, uh, Mozart, the, 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 the great masters, uh, music is doing much the same thing that Greek civilization in general achieved through their philosophy, through their architecture, through their literature, of a distillation, as I said earlier, a distillation of the human experience, a, uh, a, a, a distilling the ambiguities and the paradoxes of human, of human life, uh, the strength of the human being and the human being's weaknesses, uh, the mystery of, of, of the gods, if you were, the, the, the question of if there are gods or not. If so, what difference does it make? If so, what are they like? Uh, how you define the human experience, all of that is in music, it, uh, and it is in Greek antiquity. Uh, it boils down experience to the essential. Uh, someone once said to the composer Mendelssohn, well, you know, you can't really talk or write about music because it's so vague. And Mendelssohn very famously responded, uh, the reason you can't talk about music is because it is so specific. And here I am trying to talk about music and talk about classical antiquity. And in a way, of course, you never really can because it is always the thing itself. You know, rather than talking about the Parthenon, you just have to look at the Parthenon. And there you see, as, as one uh, older critic of an earlier generation might say, the frozen music of that wonderful architecture. Uh, I think it was Walter Pater who said that all art aspires to become music. And certainly there is no body of art, except maybe for, I'm thinking in my own narrow field of the theater, except maybe for the plays of Chekhov or, uh, or Moliere uh, or Shakespeare, that aspire more to being like music than do the, 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 the classics of Greek literature, whether it's theater or epic. Or, or the odes that they wrote. Uh, it, Greek literature was music. I mean, most of it was intended, if it was in poetry, it was intended to be sung. And that's something also that makes the Greeks as close to us as they are, also extremely alien to us, is that to them there was no difference between poetry and music. And so much of their, of their, of their, uh, their literature was sung and recited in a highly declamatory way. Uh, that, that's, that's very different from what anything we're really used to today.